Hello everyone and welcome to another ride overview. Today we are going to talk about the spiral coaster. It is a bit of an odd coaster type that I don't see used very often, but after watching this video you might just start using it more. This is of course my personal opinion, but I think it's a fairly ugly coaster type. The cars are way too long, which makes the movement of the train seem very janky. The trains and supports look quite flimsy and are the same as that of the mini coaster, and while the single cars of the mini coaster look fine on it, the long and bulky trains of the spiral coaster do not. The main gimmick of the spiral coaster is its signature spiral lift hill. This has both a positive and a negative aspect. It allows you to get very high without the need for a lot of space, which is useful when space is tight. However, it is also very expensive. Open RCT2 also has normal chain lifts for the spiral coaster, so we can make a nice comparison here. These two lift hills are both 18 meters tall, but their costs are wildly different. As you can see, the spiral lift hill costs more than three times as much as the normal lift hill, which is a huge difference. Even though the lift hills are very expensive, the other elements of the spiral coaster are very cheap compared to most coaster types, so on smaller designs you won't notice the pricey lift hills that much. So far you might not think that the spiral coaster is that great, but it has one huge redeeming quality, and that is possibly the best excitement to intensity ratio out of all coaster types. It does not have a super high excitement rating, but it does have an incredibly low intensity and nausea rating. Take a look at these four coasters. From left to right there are a wooden coaster, a corkscrew coaster, a looping coaster and a spiral coaster, all identical. The spiral coaster has by far the lowest intensity rating out of all of them. In fact, it has the lowest natural intensity rating out of all coaster types. This makes the spiral coaster a great coaster type for beginners. This low intensity rating is what makes the spiral coaster so great. Even if you make a mistake and accidentally give it something like negative 4 vertical G's, you will still have a reasonable intensity rating. The low intensity rating also makes it great for parks where guests prefer gentle rides. It's gentle, but it's also a roller coaster, which means that you can make a lot of money with it still. The only downside to a low intensity rating is that a higher intensity rating means that you can charge more, but the difference isn't that big so it's only a small downside. I've talked about the spiral lift hill already, so now let's take a look at every other special element the spiral coaster gets. It's nothing crazy, but it does get enough elements to make some interesting rides. You have the station, brakes, block brakes, S-bands, on-ride photo section, small helix and large helix. The only truly special element that it has is the aforementioned spiral lift hill. Before I show you the designs I've come up with, I will talk a bit about the stat requirements the spiral coaster has. It needs to have a drop of at least 9 meters. It needs to have at least 2 drops. It needs to have a top speed of at least 36 km per hour. And it needs to have at least 0.40 negative vertical g's. If it fails to meet any of these requirements, its stats will get divided by 2 for every requirement it fails to meet. We have now arrived at the part of the video where I show you some designs. Since the spiral coaster does not have a lot of options, these are not going to have a lot of variety. All but the last one are essentially the same coaster but different sizes. The first design is the cheapest possible design that does not get any stat penalties. It is not super useful as the train is very short and it has very low stats. However, if you ever need to get as many guests as cheaply as possible and the spiral coaster is your best option, this is the best design to use. The second design is already a lot better. It is slightly larger, has slightly higher stat and a much higher capacity. It is still very cheap, but it will make you a lot more money than the previous design. This design is very good when you charge for the rides and have little money. Up next is once again a slightly bigger version. It is more expensive, has a larger footprint and a lower throughput than the previous design. However, it also has higher stats, meaning that you can charge more for it. This design is better than the previous one in situations where you know that the ride will not reach its maximum capacity anyway. 
because then the lower capacity doesn't matter. You will still get the same number of guests while being able to charge more. The fourth design is when you need to get the most out of your guests per ride. It is big, expensive and the lift hill takes forever, meaning that it has a low throughput. It does have higher stats than all the others, so you can charge the most for it, which can be useful in some situations. With this design you do see how expensive the lift hill gets when you make it taller. The last design is a Mobius coaster. This one has a very high throughput, meaning that you can make a lot of money if you have enough guests to fill the capacity. It also gets the stat boost from synchronized stations, which gives an extra 0.40 excitement. The only downside is that the ride is not very compact, so this might not be the best option if you don't have a lot of space. That is everything I have to say about the spiral coaster. It is a bit of an ugly coaster type, but it has surprisingly good stats. It is best suited for smaller designs, but it can also pull off larger designs if you really want it to. It is also a great coaster type for beginners who have just started out designing their own coasters. A zip file with all the designs featured in this video is in the description. A calculator that you can use to calculate how much you can charge for your rides is also in the description. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video.